and welcome to the fifth meeting of the Welfare Reform Committee for 2016, which uh, will be our last meeting of this parliamentary session. Um, Christina McKelvey will be late. She's stuck in traffic at, at, at the moment. Um, could everyone make sure that mobile phones and other electronic devices are either switched off or turned to aeroplane mode? Uh, item one, can we agree to take item four in private? Indeed. Thank you. Uh, item two on our agenda, uh, evidence in the subordinate legislation, uh, Council Tax Reduction Scotland Amendment Regulations 2016. And we have with us uh, Robin Haynes, who's the head of the Council Tax Unit at the Scottish Government. This is a negative instrument which amends the principal regulations concerning council tax reduction to reflect the UK Government's uprating of Social Security benefits for 2016-17, and it makes a number of additional and consequential amendments. Could I invite Robin Haynes to brief the committee? Thank you. Uh, good morning and thank you. Um, I think it, myself or one of my colleagues have put in an annual appearance in front of this committee at a similar time since the council tax reduction scheme was introduced in uh, 2013. Uh, the statutory instrument uh, laid in the subject of discussion this morning uh, continues that pattern of uh, social, uh, reflecting changes to the social security system by the UK government. Um, this very much reflects the policy commitment given by Scottish ministers when Kental tax benefit was abolished. Um, and that was that uh, everyone or all individuals' net council tax liability uh, would remain as it would have been had council tax benefit not been abolished. And our nearest comparator to that has been uh, changes to the housing benefit scheme in that historically entitlement to council tax benefit and housing benefit uh, was subject to exactly the same criteria. Um, so uh, that has been used as a yardstick. Uh, in essence, um, the changes uh, cha uh, reflect um, amendments to the working age regulations. Um, normally, the allowances within the applicable amount are uprated by the CPI, by the UK government, but in the relevant period, the CPI was actually negative, so those are unchanged. Uh, the equivalent amendments for the pension age regulations reflect the UK government's triple lock and all uh, entitlement to pensioners. Um, there are one or two other bits and pieces of um, legislative reference updating, if you like, for example, uh, Regulation uh, 4 to, uh, changes um, some of the references to reflect new policy schemes and indeed Regulation 6. I don't know how many people will be coming from Wales uh, with, with, uh, subject to this criteria, uh, but nevertheless is bound to be one if it's not done. Thank you. Um, you mentioned for the, the period concerned that CPI was negative, so therefore uh, there would be no change. Uh, what period was that? Uh, September. Um, so that was the year until September? Yeah, I think so. I would have to clarify. But yes, my notes say September CPI was negative, uh, minus 0.1%. Right. And is that mm. still the case? So anybody for uh, this year, presumably any changes would, would, be, would be next September? Would that be right? Uh, the reference period would be next September, but of course the, the, uh, the scheme going forward from 17 onwards uh, would be a matter for an incoming uh, Scottish Government. Would that then include what operating uh, method was used? Could, could they then decide not to apply CPI and to revert to what was there before? Uh, a new Government could change... Well, could. Uh, change just about anything in the scheme if they so, so desired. Uh, the scheme is enabled under powers in the 1992 Local Government Finance Act, so the whole scheme is set in secondary legislation. So the power lies with the Scottish Government to determine what method of operating yeah. it would apply. Yes. So if, for example, it was felt that CPI was either inappropriate or unfair or didn't properly reflect uh, cost of living increases, it, it, it could go to arguably RPI or, or something else? Absolutely, yes. Right. Okay, anyone else? No? Okay, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Right. Um, okay, item three on our agenda. Um, committee, uh, does the committee have any comments on the subordinate legislation? Happy enough to agree it? 
Thank you. Uh, and just before I go into private session, this is our uh, last meeting of, uh, of this parliamentary session. Um, it will also be uh, my last meeting as a member of the Scottish Parliament, as a, a, a convener. I've been a, a convener in the European Committee, then interrupted by a, a stint as a minister. I've uh, been convener twice of the Public Audit Committee and now uh, Welfare Reform Committee. I've enjoyed my time as a, as a convener. I think the committees of this Parliament are important and they were regarded for a while as, at least as the uh, cutting edge of the Scottish Parliament. And I hope that in the new Parliament, uh, whatever the, the composition is of that Parliament, that the committees will be robust in holding the governments of the day to account because uh, it's the least that the public expects of us. And I think it is an important facet of uh, parliamentary uh, democracy. So to those attempting uh, to come back, uh, I, I wouldn't quite wish everyone good luck because I will have my political prejudices, but uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy the next few weeks. I can certainly say that uh, while I am engaged in campaigning, uh, there's slightly less pressure not being a candidate, and uh, that is, is quite a nice feeling. So uh, thank you for the work that the committee members have done in welfare reform. I know, Kevin, you've been here uh, from the beginning. I think, uh, while it's a relatively new committee, it has made its mark. I think with the impending changes, um, there are going to be exciting opportunities to influence the political agenda. I think there'll, there'll be challenges, there's no doubt about that. Uh, so I, I'm sure that whether it's this committee or whether, if the Parliament decides to restructure its committees, whichever committee has it, uh, I think there'll be some fascinating and uh, interesting discussions to take place. So uh, th thank you to Mr Haynes and uh, good luck to the, the new committees in the Parliament. Thank you. And I'll, with that, we'll move into private session.